Hi, I'm Ray Siebert with Tracy Technologies. And today we're doing a case presentation that gets us into this weird mystical world of depth of focus. What is depth of focus and how do we correct it? Well, not many people really understand it. It's complicated optics. However, one of the things the eye trace is really good at is taking complicated optical problems and showing them, displaying them in a way that makes sense. I hope you'll understand this depth of focus comparison display after we go through this. So who are we looking at? This is a 55 year old ophthalmologist, wonderful guy I met in Cali, Colombia recently. And he came up and he said, Ray, I, I, I don't wear reading glasses. I'm 55. I said, well, maybe you're a natural uh, uh, monovision. And he says, no, no, I can't be. I'm, I'm like a minus 75 in one eye and a minus 150 in the other. I said, well, that, that's almost monovision. He said, no, I shouldn't, I, sh I shouldn't be able to see as well as I do. So well, let's map you. First step, map him on the eye trace, see what it says. This is a display called the depth of focus comparison. Let's explain a little bit what we're looking at. This is his right eye. This is his left eye. Now, what is a depth of focus curve? Well, the peak is your best refraction. And when you go halfway up the height of this mountain, all of this above this, think of the top of the mountain, is usable vision. And all of this outside is unacceptable blur. So what does he really have? He has from about a minus 75 to about a minus 175 in this one eye. And then in the other eye, it picks up almost miraculously and goes to about a minus 275. So his range of vision is very good. But more importantly, it's placed perfectly. He gets from about a minus 75 to about a minus 275. So I tell him, I said, I think I see what you have. You have depth of focus that's a little bit different in each eye. But because there's no overlap and because there's no gap between these two curves, you see continuously well from distance to intermediate to near. Now, let me guess. Your distance vision's not as great as you said it was. You're about a minus 75. Most people can overcome that, but in the real distance at infinity, you don't see perfect. But boy, your intermediate is spectacular and your reading is spectacular. And he said, yeah, it is. I said, think about this. If you could take this minus 75 and correct you back to Plano in both eyes, in other words, just add minus 75 to both eyes and move these two curves over, then you'd see really good in the distance really good intermediate, and, and you'd still have plenty of reading. You'd have about a minus two add at 55, that should be plenty. And he started looking at it and he said, wow, this is, a, this is an interesting way to think. Well, this is why we're talking about this case. This is exactly what you should be trying to achieve when you put in depth of focus lenses or you put in multifocality. Think of it as mini monovision. This is the best refraction, but if you make this Plano, then this portion is wasted. If this is in the plus side of Plano, it gets, it's wasted. Patients don't need more than that. So what they really need is, they need this first eye, the dominant eye, let's call it, targeted maybe minus a half or minus 75 to get the full range of these lenses. And then they need the next eye to be matched right where this tails off to pick up. And this display would help you target where you're gonna put the power on these depth of focus lenses. It's an interesting concept. It's a little hard to understand, but boy, this is an easy way to think about it. If you could just get these two peaks with no valley in the middle, and you had this right at Plano, your patient would be amazed. So, something for you to think about. Depth of focus. We measure it, we display it in a way that will help you, and when you think about where to target that second eye, this is really your go-to method. 